Hello, we are Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird speaking with you live here with another preview of an upcoming total solar eclipse. We talked about the 2026 eclipse yesterday, and today another renowned eclipse chaser, Jamie Carter of Forbes. Jamie has seen and written about eight total solar eclipses, and I spoke with him a few days ago about an eclipse coming up in August of 2027, a very special eclipse. Here's Jamie Carter. So we saw your article in Forbes recently about uh, what you called the greatest natural event of the 21st century. So tell us about that. What is that and why is it the greatest? Yeah, so this is the, the 2027 total solar eclipse. It happens on August the 2nd, so just over two years, uh, just under two years away, sorry, uh, now, so which is quite exciting. Uh, I'm calling it the greatest natural event of the 21st century because I just can't think of anything that would beat it because it was, it's going to be six minutes and 22.4 seconds in Egypt. And... Um, no other eclipse will get close to that for the rest of this century, not until almost 100 years time. And although perhaps the, the duration of totality isn't the most important thing, the fact that the total eclipse happens at all is the, is the most amazing thing. But I've never experienced a totality longer than, um, longer than about four minutes. Uh, and even and that one was a cloudy eclipse. So I, I actually haven't experienced a clear eclipse for probably more than a couple a couple of minutes, uh, and that's over twenty five years. So and I can't think of anything that would beat it. I just can't. I, I can't even imagine what I'll do in in six minutes and and twenty two seconds. Um, I say to people, it's, it's like seeing the sun as, as it really is. It's like seeing the sun as a star floating in a black. You know, against a black sky, floating in space, like like all stars are. Um, so, which we intellectually know, but to to see that in, in front of your own eyes with your own with your own sun is is amazing. And so, where do you plan to be for the August second, twenty twenty seven eclipse? Well, I will be in Luxor in Egypt, which is I still struggle to believe that a, a total solar eclipse is actually going over Luxor because Luxor in Egypt is one of the probably the most amazing place that I've ever been. I've actually been there before. Um, it's the ancient capital of Egypt and it's the home to the Valley of the Kings, the Valley of the Queens. All these places will will have a total solar eclipse. Now, the, of course, those, those, those tombs are underground so that you don't want to be anywhere near the Valley of the Kings, but there's a lot of beautiful temples there. Karnak, the, the main temple of ancient Egypt for, for a long time. Uh, Luxor Temple and I think it's Hatshepsut Temple, a, a huge, huge temple uh, with a really big outdoor space as well next to the mountains. I just can't think of a more incredible place for an eclipse to be. So I'll be there with, with a tour group actually lecturing, but there'll be many thousands of of eclipse chasers from all over the world will be going there because it's the closest place to the centre point, the maximum eclipse point of this eclipse. Uh, six minutes, 22 seconds. But there are some other places where you could see the eclipse as well, correct? Yeah, and actually, although Luxor is the place to go for if you want, I guess, bragging rights for the longest eclipse left in this century, um, there are other places which are actually quite a lot cooler. You could go to Tunisia and see, a, I think it's, um, uh, let's have a look, five minutes of totality there, five minutes, 40 seconds of totality there in, in Tunisia. That will be an easier place and, and, and probably Luxor will have a clear sky, almost 95% chance and the same in Tunisia, really. Uh, there'll be cruise ships off, off Tunisia as well. But there are many other places. There's other places in Egypt, although maybe not so many because tourism in Egypt tends to, to focus on um, on Luxor in that part of the country, but there is uh, Siwa Oasis, which is somewhere you can get to from Cairo. That will be popular, although quite remote, quite a long drive from Cairo. Um, 
but it starts in Spain. Spain is the easiest place to get to, probably, especially for Europeans. They can drive to Spain. I mean, there's going to be one there next year, as we, as you know. But yeah, Spain will be a good place to go for photography, definitely, because getting photography gear into North Africa can be challenging. So I would probably advise photographers to go to Spain and, and have to put up with a shorter eclipse. It's only a two and a half minute, two and a half to three minutes in, in Spain. And so, you know, we in the U.S. know from seeing the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse that you have to be inside that eclipse path to see it. And when is uh, the next, do you know when the next U.S. eclipse is? The next U.S. eclipse is in uh, August 2044, but it's not a very good one. It's a, uh, it's, it's, um, it's mainly a Greenland and Canadian eclipse, and it comes in through Canada, and then it kind of clips Montana and the Dakotas at sunset. Uh, but the really the best one uh, is directly related to the 2027 solar eclipse. It is part of the same repeating pattern of eclipses, the Saros, and that repeats every just under 19 years. So that will be um, August 20. 45 there's a huge solar eclipse across coast to coast across the us yeah so and that's a, a long eclipse it's actually the saros this saros is past its best so with every repeating eclipse it gets a tiny bit shorter um, right. this one will be maybe 30 seconds shorter in 2045 and then um a tiny bit shorter the, the following occasion so it, but it's still the, the most important Saros around in terms of the length of totality. So if you just wanted to see the longest eclipses of the century, you would just follow that same Saros. That was Jamie Carter of Forbes talking about the August 2027 total solar eclipse. So it's a super interesting Saros for this uh, eclipse. And as you may know, a Saros is just a a period of about 18 years, 11 days and eight hours, after which the earth, sun and moon return to nearly the same geometry in space. And that cyclical return causes nearly identical solar and lunar eclipses to repeat. So the 2027 eclipse belongs to the Saros in the illustration behind me here. It's Cerro Series 136, known for producing long total solar eclipses. And as Jamie said, this Cerros links this upcoming 2027 eclipse in Egypt with the next really good solar eclipse in the U.S. in the year 2045. So that is our series on the next two total solar eclipses. Be sure to watch for yesterday's interview of eclipse chaser Michael Zeiler. He talked about the August 2026 eclipse. The link is in the description. And Jamie Carter and his wife Gil Carter have a new book out, A Complete Guide to the Total Solar Eclipse of 2026, Greenland, Iceland, and Spain. If you're planning to see next year's eclipse, this book is definitely worth a look. And finally, if you're thinking of joining an eclipse tour in 2026 or 2027, be sure to act fast. Some tours, even for 2027, are already sold out. We'll be back live tomorrow, midday in North America, to remember the tragedy and heroism of Hurricane Katrina 20 years ago. One earth, one sky, earth sky.